Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Our guest today is Reid Brody, who is a legal advisor to Human Rights Watch. His specialty is to hunt down dictators and bring them to justice. And we're going to take a few examples of that hunt uh, today. We'll begin uh, with Hissène Abre, uh, the former leader of Chad. Uh, you've been working on this issue for many years. You're actually a legal counsel to the victims of Hissène Abre. He's been living in exile in Senegal for the past two decades, but it seems now he might be brought to trial because Senegal has decided to go ahead. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on? Sure. As you say, Hissène Abre was the president of Chad from 1982 to 1990. He's accused of thousands of political killings and of systematic torture. Uh, when he was overthrown, he, he fled to Senegal. 22 years ago. Um, and uh, for the last 14 years, um, his victims have been seeking to bring him to justice. In fact, he was indicted for the first time uh, in Senegal uh, in, 19, uh, in, in 2000, 13 years ago. Um, but uh, the then president of Senegal, Abdoulaye Wade, um, subjected th the victims to what has been described by Bishop Tutu as a legal and political soap opera. And uh, the victims, however, through their tenacity and their persistence, have kept this case alive. And finally, last year, a combination of two things, a judgment by the International Court of Justice, the highest court in the world, um, which uh, ordered Senegal to bring Hissène Habre to justice, uh, and in particular, the election uh, in Senegal of uh, new president Macky Sall. And in, in the last 10 months, Macky Sall and his minister of justice, Aminata Touré, have done more to set this case going uh, than President Wad had done in the previous 12 years. Uh, and uh, just last month, a special court uh, was established in Senegal, the Extraordinary African Chambers. Um, uh, within the Senegalese courts, but with some judges named by the African Union, um, so that Hissène Habre would be tried not only by Senegal, uh, but in the name of Africa. And uh, judges have been appointed, the prosecutor has been appointed, and the court has now begun its work. So after 22 years, um, it looks like uh, there will be justice in this case. If there will be justice, there will be a trial. This is not yet sure. And if so, when do you expect a trial to begin? Well, according to the plan and the budget and the calendar, um, right now the, 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 the prosecutor is preparing his, uh, his charge sheet, his indictment. Um, then it is expected that there'll be a, a, a 15-month investigation um, by, by four uh, investigating judges. So there could be a trial uh, within uh, the next two years. Now, obviously, investigating and prosecuting crimes Uh, that took place in another country 20 years It's ago unheard of. is a very complex task. Fortunately, a lot of work has been done, particularly by the victims in those 20 years. Um, uh, we happen to recover the files of Hissène Habre's political police, tens of thousands of documents um, that are a virtual roadmap uh, to the repression carried out by his government, uh, which lists the names of 1,208 people who died in detention, of over 12,000 victims. Um, there are hundreds of victim testimonies, obviously. In addition, many people around Hissène Habre, insiders, um, have come forth with their testimony. So there's already a very strong Uh, a file from which the Senegalese can begin to work. And in addition, other, because this case has bounced around so long, the Belgian justice system has investigated this case for four years as well. So there's a lot for them to work with. The question is, first of all, whether there will be a trial, but most importantly, if it will be a fair trial. His lawyers are saying, you know, there won't be a fair trial. And also because of the role of his successor, Idris Deby, who's the current president of Chad and whose human rights record is far from sterling. And the fact that his government is financing uh, this trial could really be a problem in terms of fairness. What's your response? Well, obviously, we want to see a fair trial. I mean, we don't want to see Hissène Habre subjected to anything like what Um, his victims were, were subjected to. 
Um, the trial is being financed by a number of sources, the European Union, the African Union, the United States, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Chad. Chad is financing um, 3 million euros, um, which I, I, that's where the crimes took place. That's the country that has the most interest uh, for this trial. So I don't think there's anything un, untoward about Chad contributing towards the trial. They have no say over who the judges are, over what uh, the prosecutor does. Um, they have no, no more say than Belgium or, 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 or the European Union as to how the evidence is, is, is collected and, 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 and how the trial is, is, is put forward. what about Idris Deby's role? I mean, Idris is, is, Deby, is this a problem? Well, I think Idris Deby was uh, Hissen Habre's military chief of staff right. for a number of years. Um, the judges are not limited um, to looking at Hissen Habre. Of course, this case began in Senegal because Hissen Habre is in Senegal, and that's why uh, his victims went to Senegal. But the, actually, the statute of the court uh, says that it is to investigate the person or persons most responsible for crimes committed in Chad from 1982 to 1990. Now, there are many other people, obviously, not just Idris Deby. I mean, the, 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 the heads of Habre's political police, which was the principal element of, of, of repression in Chad, uh, army officers. I don't know that given the, the, the limited time frame and the limited budget that the court is going to have the ability to go into the second and third layers. Um, and obviously, Hissen Habre is the person most responsible, we believe, for those crimes. Okay, I want to switch uh, to Haiti, where something quite remarkable happened on February 28th. Uh, Jean-Claude Duvalier, who is known as Baby Doc and who ruled Haiti between 1971 and 1986, he then fled, lived in exile in France, he returned to Haiti, and he was brought before a judge for a pre-trial audience, and he was asked questions about his past crimes. Many people thought this would never happen. I think this was remarkable. Uh, uh, I've been working on the case for several years. Um, first, actually, when uh, Duvalier went back to Haiti, uh, we were called by the Preval government um, to help them build the dossier against uh, Jean-Claude Duvalier. Um, uh, and, but then when, when President Martelli was elected, the political will in Haiti uh, to pursue this case seemed to have dried up. Um, so it was quite remarkable. Um, again, the persistence and the tenacity of Duvalier's victims, who didn't let go. A lower judge throughout the case, a lower court judge, said the crimes happened too far in the past. Uh, of course, you know, as the Hissen Habre case, many cases around the world, from Argentina and Cambodia uh, to Uruguay and Guatemala, are, are, are pursuing cases that happened 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, it was remarkable that the appellate court uh, ordered uh, Jean-Claude Duvalier to appear. He didn't. The second time he didn't appear, they issued a warrant for him to come in. And finally, the third time he came in. And just his presence in the court, uh, uh, who would have thought uh, that Jean-Claude Duvalier uh, would be made to, to come to court and to face his victims, that he would have to listen um, to the names of his victims being read out, um, that he would have to answer questions about repression uh, in Haiti. And I think um, no matter what happens next, and it's, it, this case is far from actually being to trial, I think Haitians are always going to remember, remember in a country where the rich and the powerful have always been above the laws, which the law has never served even to, to deal with the worst atrocities. I think Haitians are going to remember this image of their former dictator in court. Okay, another former dictator in court, Guatemala, Efrain Rios Montt, who ruled uh, the country for a short period in the early 80s. Uh, there should be a trial for him uh, slated to begin in August uh, on charges of genocide, which is basically the worst of the worst crimes, uh, for a repression uh, against some uh, Maya Indians. Uh, this is also totally new in this, this part is, of the world. This is also a remarkable uh, uh, testimony, again, to the tenacity of, of victims who did not give up the fight. Um, uh, in Guatemala's 36-year civil war, some 200,000 people died. And the worst period were the 17 months 
of Efrain Rios Mont's rule in the early 80s when he adopted a scorched earth policy. And he's accused in the death of, of thousands of, of Mayan Indians in the, in the Ischiel Highlands. Um, and uh, for many years, there wasn't the political will. Uh, Rios Mont had parliamentary immunity. Um, but thanks, again, to the victims, but also to a very brave uh, prosecutor, Claudia Passi Pass, who has braved, obviously, death threats in a country where, that, that is, where, where death is frequent, um, uh, to bring this case uh, to justice. And it's actually just been announced that the trial has been moved up to March. So we're looking next month um, at a uh, – uh, actually, this month. This month. <laughs> sorry, this month um, – at the first genocide trial uh, uh, in, in, in a national court, certainly in the Americas. And you, you think this will be conclusive, that there will be no political pressure to Well, make... you know, this is – you can't exclude this. I mean, this is a country in which, uh, uh, you know, in which prosecutors, in which judges have been threatened, assassinated, and killed, um, in which the road to justice, unfortunately, has been littered um, with the bodies of people seeking justice. Um, so this is also a long way from a done deal. Um, but the fact that his victims have gotten him into court, the fact that the Supreme Court, the, the, the Constitutional Court, has rejected um, his requests for an, to be covered by the amnesty uh, on all his defenses is already – it says a lot about the possibilities for justice. Okay. Thank you very much, Reed Brody. That's all we have time for. Thank you very much for watching this edition of the interview here on France 24.